Blog Talk Radio. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, across the country. We always get giddied up for this one. This is the big one coming out of Cleveland, Ohio, on Tuesdays. Next Tuesday, no show. We're archiving it. We'll be back live on the 26th. But I'm blessed to produce this. This is the American Sports History Podcast, hosted by a brother of mine, a mentor, a friend, Peter Ray. Yours truly, Mark Mancini, producing it live in Los Angeles, 347-205-9631. You can catch the archive version on blogtalkradio.com forward slash Mancini Sports. There's a bunch of you online. We'll get to most of you, if not all of you. But... um, Tune in to uh, the podcast wherever you can on uh, wherever podcast you subscribe to. It's powered now by Mancini Media. As I lay the red carpet down, put the podium in its place, and hand off the mic, it's more him, less of me. First of all, Peter, how are you? Second of all, how can people get a hold of you? And third of all, you've been waiting a long time for this legend coming through. And, man, there could be many more with them. Take it away, my friend, as I man the boards. Hi, Mark. I'm doing well. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. It's called uh, We Make History Videos. It's my name, Peter J. Ray, R-E-A. And you're absolutely right. Tonight's guest, oh, my gosh, he played Major League Baseball from 1971 to 1981 with the Chicago Cubs, Oakland A's, L.A. Dodgers, and San Francisco Giants. He won two World Series championships, 1973 and 1974 with the Oakland A's. In his career, he had 395 stolen bases, two-time American League stolen base leader in 74 and 76, more than 1,000 career hits. The first designated hitter for the Oakland A's won a National League title with the Dodgers in 78, led the American League three times in total chances per game, twice in putouts, once in assists from the outfield on a double play. He had an unassisted double play in July of 1974. And, oh, boy, the talk, for me, the coolest baseball team of all, all time, the, the Oakland A's from the early 70s, the, the, the leadoff hitter and the starting center fielder. Welcome to the show. It's such a tremendous honor, Mr. Bill Norris. Why, thank you, Peter. That's illustrious. <laughs> oh, that's good, good, word, good word, illustrious. Yeah, you know, I just it's, today is not my birthday. It's not Christmas. We've talked on the. We had two, like three good talks on the phone. Other talk, and uh, but this is just a wonderful gift. Talking, to, I've been bragging to people. I talked to Bill North, and it's just amazing because you guys in the early '70s with your green and yellow uniforms, white shoes, and mustaches. And winning three World Series in a row, I mean, you guys were just the coolest, uh, to me, the coolest team of all time, the Oakland A's in the early 70s. Yeah, two things. If we were in Boston or New York, they'd be talking about us as one of the greatest teams of all time. And I can't remember that second one. <laughs> but it, it, those guys were were something. We could have won more World Series if the owner hadn't put his little fingers in there. Yeah, without if you had Catfish Hunter in '75, right? I mean, you 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 would have gotten a shot at the big red machine. Yeah, it would be fine with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was too bad. But anyway, that's that's life and things. Uh, uh, Albert from Poway, California. Unbelievable. Bi- Unbelievable, Bill North. Wow, the swinging A's, the mustache gang with cheap Charlie Finley. <laughs> yeah, that's a story in itself. We were we had eight free potential free agents, and I was one of them. And then Charlie gave me the money that I wanted because we had a pretty good relationship. And the other seven went free agents and became millionaires. Uh, while I sat there with that seventy thousand dollar a year salary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that must have been tough seeing the. Yeah, and uh, well, that was the beginning of the free agent era when the salaries really started going up. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, now the uh, I'd like to. What I'm really interested in hearing. Oh, let's see. We got uh, Gary from Norman, Oklahoma. 
Uh, the 70s were baseball, A's, Reds, Pirates, Phillies, Dodgers, Orioles, Yankees. Bill North is right up there with God. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, actually, I am. <laughs> because we have a very, very intimate relationship, me and God. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, that... I didn't hear him mention the A's in there. Oh yeah, A's, A's, Reds, Pirates. Yeah, you're you're number one. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we. It was a great era. It was uh, uh, the greatest players to ever play the game came in. Started, of course, with uh, uh, Jackie, but the influx in the '54, '55, uh, those years is when uh, are when a lot of those great players came along. I mean, I'm talking about Mays, Mantle, uh, uh, Willie Starr, Joe, Billy Williams, Ernie Banks, those guys. And I could keep on going, Hank Aaron. It, it, but those guys right there were the greatest players to ever play the game. No, and I'm interested. They Go ahead. So I'm sorry. Smart. They were so smart. And they knew the game. In and out. And I, Billy Williams used to swing bad at a pitch in the fifth inning to get that pitch in the eighth inning. And, you know, he was, he was, oh, those guys were smart. <laughs> and you broke and in with the, in the all deck circle when Hank hit his 714. Yeah. Who, who's that? Dusty was in the on deck circle. Dusty Baker. Hank Aaron he was his 715. Okay. Mm. Your good friend, Dusty Baker. Yes, very good. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'd yeah, like to go back to the, your first year in uh, uh, MLB. You started with the Chicago Cubs, and I'm interested. We'll go interested in going through your career, and I'd like to hear about uh, what you remember of certain players that are memorable for me, starting with Joe Pepitone. Pepe. He used to come to the ballpark on a motorcycle, and that was one of the things in the contract that they said you can't do. Uh, but he was a good player. He was a good friend and, and a very, very nice man. He treated me well. Taylor from Flint, Michigan. Hi, Peter. Love your show every week. I saw Reggie Jackson hit the roof at the old Tiger Stadium. Does Bill have it? any thoughts on his teammates? Raleigh Fingers was a character who reminded me of a gunslinger in a Western movie. <laughs> well, Reggie, Reggie was a big hitter in my career. When all the lights were on and everybody was watching, he was the best baseball player I ever saw. Uh, and Raleigh, Catfish, Vita Blue, Kenny Holtzman, they would get you out in an hour and 45. And, and you'd be able to leave the ballpark. You know, what, and, and they were just, gosh, what a bunch of players. And everybody had a job down to the designated runner. Now, <laughs> right. Uh, continuing, go Ted, ahead. I told you about Ted Kubiak before. Uh, uh, if we needed a man moved up in in the eighth inning, he knew with that he would be called on, and he did that job, along with the fact that he was the best two-week shortstop I ever saw. And the the components of that team, they all fit, okay? And, and just a, a – good group of players and everybody didn't get along and everybody didn't love each other. But when we stepped between them white lines, we all knew what our job was. No more state. Uh, continuing with the 71 Cubs, Don Kessinger. Good man. Good man. Steady shortstop. Made the routine play all the time. You know, he wasn't like the flashy ones. Uh, uh, but he hey, and there are more routine plays than there are flashy plays, and he he held that down real good. Good man too. Ron Santo. That's my homie. He went to my uh, uh, high school. Uh, 
high school rivals. He went to Franklin and I went to Garfield. But Ronnie, uh, uh, coming from Seattle and being a baseball player, especially back in that time, I mean a player, not a pitcher, uh, uh, was hard because the weather up here, you just didn't get enough at bats. Okay. But he had a good career, one of the kindest people I ever met, a little fiery, and and he would have to – during the game sometimes when it was hot, he would have to uh, uh, get two or three ca- chocolate candy bars because he had diabetes. And and he start flashing in the game, so he stuffed some chocolate down and, and go back out and play. Good man. Billy Williams. Billy Williams. Sweet swinging Billy. <laughs> he had one of the most. He and Ken Griffey had the, the two most beautiful swings that I've ever seen. And he was my mentor. He was he was like a big brother. And, and he kept me out of uh, trouble, and, and but he taught me and he cared for me, and that. he is like uh, uh, a older brother, and and he's still here, and I love him still, and I and you're guilting me because I need to get in touch with him. <laughs> uh, well, good. We'll have to hear what hear what you hear about your. T- Next time you talk, hear about that. Cleo James. <laughs> I told you that story the other day. When I first came up to the big league, we were playing against the New York Mets, and they brought in a relief pitcher named Nolan Ryan. And Cleo was up there, bottom of the ninth inning, with the winning run on base. And so you got to hang in there. You look. Know? And Nolan Ryan hit him square in the head with one of them fastballs. And it kind of uh, made me shudder. I said, so this is the big leagues, huh? <laughs> but he was a good man, and he helped me too a lot. Ernie Banks. Come on, let's play too. <laughs> I was there. I came up in 71, you know, that – that month, and and uh, and Ernie was on, on on his decline. But the next year, uh, he uh, he was fading, which is natural. So was Mays and and that kind of stuff. But there was a, our manager treated him like he was a clubhouse clown. And and I think he disrespected him, but he Ernie Banks is Ernie Banks. Look at the numbers. <laughs> yeah, that's too that's too bad about Leo DeRocher disrespecting Ernie Banks. Uh, uh, Steve from Kirkland, Washington. No show has that's guys me. like this. Thank you, Peter. Love Bill. Who designated the white cleats to match the green and yellow outfits? I remember Raleigh Fingers and Joe Rudy almost being treated to Boston. Who was the other piece going to New York before Bowie Coon stepped in? Uh, uh, who was it? It was Raleigh. Was that by the blue? Yeah. Yeah. Or the Yankees? We were in Oakland. <laughs> we okay. were in Oakland. And Joe came into the locker room with a Boston uniform on. When we were at the ballpark, we didn't know nothing about it. And and then then we found out about the trade that, that was Charlie Finley, and and uh, uh, what the deal was we we didn't like that and we went on strike and we weren't going on the field till they nixed the trade, you know it hadn't been finalized, and uh, uh, when we wouldn't go on the field and then Charlie gave in. Which was, uh, we were the power, and he gave in and nixed the trade. Okay, but uh, uh, yeah, I think it was Vida or Raleigh. 
Yeah, you know, but it was a thing that we erupted <clears throat> when Joe came and told us uh, uh, that he'd been traded. And it was against both June Knicks that trade. That's what he did. Yeah. Yeah. I think and they were. He sold them for a lot of money, right? And plus, and a plus a player. Yeah, Charlie. Like that. The, uh, the relationship between Charlie and Bowie Kuhn was, uh, of course, well publicized, and, and that, and that it, I in '73 when I hurt myself right before the World Series, Charlie wouldn't let me uh, uh, sit on the bench. Because he wanted to show Bowie Kuhn that he was going with just 24 players. And I never was involved in that, even down to the seventh game when they celebrated. I was in Oakland and they won in, in New York. But it was the kind of thing that, hey, man, takes all kinds. But that's all I got to worry about. Life ain't so bad. Well, you you weren't there for the World Series because you were hurt, but you were they, they wouldn't have won the '73 World Series without you. Uh, I'm Ed, Edward from Clearwater, Florida, listening to the Peter and Bill show. Music music to my ears. I still think the Baltimore Orioles were better than those Oakland A's. Just an opinion. Well, you know everybody got it, but I'll tell you this. I'll, I'll tell you this: the toughest thing. I ever had to do in my career against the Baltimore Orioles because they were just like us. And, and, but we had, we beat them twice going to the world series, but Baltimore Orioles, you guys over there, you ain't going to get too many hits. Uh, uh, with, uh, Paul Blair in center, Brooks Robinson, Mark Belanger, Bobby Gritch, and and Boo Powell down there, you know, hey, hit, and they had long grass. They, they had the infield grass long, so the ball would slow down. <laughs> Go ahead and see that. Hey, man, what a great team. And a good manager. Good manager, but I I, I give him my, my respect with his love for the Baltimore Orioles. But, hey, man, we got the rings. So yeah, now I've always thought, I've thought about uh, the Orioles rotation. Palmer at the top. Who was who do you think was better, Dave McNally or Mike Cuellar? Uh, I hit both because I I came up as a right-handed hitter. I hit Cuellar and McNally well. The best pitcher on that team right there was JP, and and you talking about. With that, there's another one with that high leg kick that you couldn't steal off of. Okay, <laughs> you know, I mean it was tougher to steal off. I did steal off, but it's a kind of thing. That team and and Pat Dobson, and I kind of hit him good. I don't, I, but if you check the record, I'm remembering feeling comfortable against them. JP wasn't one you felt comfortable against. Carlos from Duarte, California. Hey, Bill, the worst fans when you're play, when you were playing in the best. The A's were a traveling circus. What's your take on Burt Campanaris? What a shortstop. He could make the plays. Cappy was really talented and smart. Okay. Uh, uh, come on, man. That ball's coming, coming off the bat, going to center field. I've seen him get it more than once. And, and yes, a, a good, good. Uh, 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 short stuff teammate, and he could he could run too. Although I would have stole more bases if he took more pitches. <laughs> uh, now, what's the other part of that question? Oh, he was asking about the uh, the worst fans and the and 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 the let's see the worst fan and the, the fans where you I guess where you're playing on the road with the best and worst best fans. fans. Best fans. Uh, probably Angels. Worst fans, Detroit. And Boston. Okay. They got patient. 
David from Austin, Texas. Hey, Bill, save my Texas Rangers. They're no good. Can I throw a steak on the barbecue for Peter and you? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Every team goes through its cycle. Texas, had, wherever I went, I had this guy, Nolan Ryan. Uh, when I started in the National League, when I got traded to the American League, he came to the Angels. When I went back to the National League, he was with the Angels and Texas. And when I went back to the National League, he was with Houston. Those 5,000 strikeouts that he had, I'm well up in there towards the top. <laughs> <laughs> Frank from Braintree, Massachusetts. He must uh, he has uh, telepathy. He said the toughest pitcher you faced was it Nolan Ryan. If you were playing today, you could hit these triple A pitchers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the kind of thing that the game has changed. The way I played the game, the way we played the game back in those days, was a lot more efficient and and playing to win where the game has changed into a, a, a statistical uh, uh, nightmare. That you've got guys hitting 230 that hit 35 home runs. That seemed to me uh, 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 you, you didn't get more than 35 hits. Then. <laughs> you know? But uh, uh, as it goes, uh, uh, the game has changed. And it's gotten to me. It's gotten boring, and and it's it's that shift and all those changing those pitchers and stuff like that. If I was one of those guys, I would practice. I I would bunt at least seventy five bunts a day in spring training, and I get them out of it because there's so many times when you need a base runner. And they got all these guys on one side of the field, and you got all of this on the other side of the field. Don't try to hit into that. Just lay down the bunt and go to first base. And if they got a shift on the next guy, let him butt two. Now you got two base runners uh, uh, with no outs, and and it's kind of thing because you always need base runners. Yeah. You know? And and it's the kind of thing that you have to uh, battle against that that shift. And I guess they're going to outlaw it next year, but it shouldn't. It, the players should have handled that, I think. Yeah, and they got one uh, catchers hitting one seventy, and they're, I guess the the strikeouts and home it's, it's everything strikeouts and home runs. Uh, Nicholas from Peoria, Illinois. Any thoughts on Lou Brock? And Ricky Henderson, where has the stolen base gone? It's gone to the stopwatch. The pitcher is lower than, I think, 1.4 and is moved to the plate. He won't run. Well, to me on that, when I was at first base, it was the kind of thing that for them to get me, at second base, the ball has to go through three people. And all three of them have to be perfect at the same time. Okay? I could also, when I was, when the stolen base was a threat, I would take two steps, uh, faking a steal. The pitcher ducked. The catcher was coming out. The shortstop was coming to the base, and the second baseman was backing him up, and the center fielder was coming up because I took two steps. And the bad part about that, they couldn't stop me anyway, but every hitter likes to see people in action when he makes contact, before he makes contact. And and it's a kind of thing that they don't want to give up an out on the bases. There, you know, it, it, base running is is different. No first to third, very seldom. The Angels were the best team. That's throughout their organization. That's one of the things they taught is go, to go to first to third, and they were uh, uh, 
excellent at it. And and but you've taken the speed out of the game. Yeah. And it it it's it's so you know, when's the when's the last time you seen the hit and run? You know, the thing I remember from the 70s was uh, watching games on TV when I was a kid and uh, with uh, the Reds playing on artificial turf and Tony Kubek and Kirk Gowdy, Joe Garagiola, and they were saying, like, oh, yeah, Morgan likes to get one foot on the on the ter- artificial turf and uh, they, they have a split screen. Do you, it was – did you uh, – who, who was the best? Go ahead. What can I'm you sorry. say about Joe Morgan's base stealing? Joe Morgan was an excellent base stealer, uh, 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 but uh, the thing is, we all, if I could get two feet on the turf, I would. <laughs> okay. You don't have a good move over there, I'm getting as much, but when you go, you kind of shorten up so they don't throw over there. But Morgan, look at his record, he, he stole a bunch of bases. Joe Morgan was a complete player. Yep, yeah. and yeah. and and uh, you know, and th- I'll tell you this much. This is the thing I want to tell you guys. As a base runner, I was one of the hardest base runners in the game because of my speed. And I wasn't little. I was 190 pounds. And and uh, uh, I I used to get them when they come across the base for that double play. But you know what? You never touched the good ones. Joe Morgan, Ozzie Smith, uh, Gary Templeton. I mean, because they they would go when you're coming down in the slide, they would go diagonal or vert, uh, uh, at an angle to be above you, and you never got them. Sometimes they couldn't make the throw, but those guys, I I wanted Ozzy Smith so bad one time, I was I could smell his breath, and I never touched him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back with the '71 uh, Cubs, uh, Pat Burke, my teammate. Pat Burke and I came minor leagues together. Really nice man, and and I'm just glad I got to play with him. And he came over to Oakland too, and he's he's a wonderful person from Worcester, Massachusetts. <laughs> and, and but good dude, good dude. We came to we we rode buses together. I got a, a, a comment here. Do you think Dave Parker should be in the Hall of Fame? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He had a good career, big hitter. He was over there with them guys who carried the big bats. You ever see Pittsburgh coming out of the locker room and they had their bats on their shoulders? And they were big bats. <laughs> I'm talking about 36. I, you know, I, I, I swung a 32 and a half, but them guys – had big bats with big weight, and they could coach the lumber company. Only only team I ever saw win a World Series strictly hitting. We are like family by about. Sister Sledge. We are family, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I that. I, that wasn't one of my favorite songs, but... <laughs> We've got well, we've got yeah. all my I've got all my sisters with me. <laughs> yeah. Our guest has experience. been Mr. Bill. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bill. What a wonderful experience I had to be able to uh, live my dream. I praise the Lord for it. But I played and I saw some great play the game. And I used to watch him on TV when I was a kid, and I got to be on the same field with him. It was a, it was a dream come true, and I thank everybody out there, but mostly the Lord, for because I I never told him, but I was blind in one eye that whole time. Like I didn't know when I was eighteen, mm. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> and but I never told them. And and so I got the because as soon as you go in the slump, they tell you it's your eye. But anyway, I'll let you guys go. If you're our, getting- our, our- our guest has been Mr. Bill North, who played Major League Baseball from 1971 to 1981, won two World Series titles in 1973 and 74 with the Oakland A's. Do you have any final comments tonight uh, for, for our uh, listeners, Mr. Bill North? I just thank you guys for it's humbling being able to be on here, and somebody thinks that i got stories to tell that would uh, be interesting to you guys, and I appreciate the time. And I appreciate the fans. And don't throw stuff out of the stands, please. <laughs> okay. Love you all. <laughs> Love you all and, and take care of yourself. Well, it's just been a tremendous experience. Yeah, you're talk you were it was a thrill for you to play major league baseball and do what you did, and it's just a tremendous thrill for me. I I never had a hope of playing professional baseball, but talking to you is just uh is it's just a wonderful wonderful gift well and i'll i'll call you up we didn't get we didn't even get through the 71 cubs let alone the rest of your career so we'll hope we can get you back on again to talk about the your career and the amazing teammates that you had uh next week there will be no show uh prayers for sam mcdowell who is recovering from uh, neck cancer surgery uh dear listener May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and rains fall soft on your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Good night, everybody. Thanks again, Mr. Bill Norris. Thank you. Wonderful.